Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Emergence. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, obviously, picking up uh, where last week's episode left us, Joe kind of feels a little defeated because now it's the whole thing of like, okay, so trying to process this whole situation with Piper because now she didn't want to come alone, come back with them. And it's like, you know, the thing is, like, what, what do I tell the family? Because it's like, if she tells Mia, then, you know, they're going to be devastated. And, you know, I like what Brooke says of, like, that you tell them the truth, that we know that Piper's alive and well, and we're going to do everything we can to get her back, you know? And so when the time does come, that she ends up having to tell them everything. And I, I thought it was kind of a sweet moment. She kind of sneaks into the house. You can tell she's not trying to make any noise because she just wants everyone at least had this night of just being like hopeful before you know Joe has to sadly you know dash her hopes and everything and then she comes home to find oh Alex is in her bed I halfway expected because Alex was in her bed I was like oh Mia must have slept in there with her with him and must have went to go sleep in Piper's room that's what I was thinking but turns out not to be the case so she's kind of like ah, and she sleeps makes sure to sleep above the cover and he's like you know didn't go well did it? you want to talk about it and she's like no so now it's a situation, uh, and I like that whole thing of, um, you know, do you want me to leave? And she's like, no. And then both looking at each other when the other is not looking, and like, neither one of them wanted to admit, like, it felt good, it felt nice. You know, it's kind of because you're kind of falling back into old routines. It's it's just a situation where it's like, you know, in Joe's case, I think it's like, it, after that night she's been through, like, she didn't want to sleep alone. I think. Uh, I skipped over it, but there's a whole situation. I love, they're like, yo, Abby, we called you out here because uh, we need you to look at this. And it's like, that's a dead body you're carrying around. It's like, yep, it's an AI. Wait, what? Yep, it's just like Piper admitting like, oh yeah, Benny. And then now Abby's like, I should have let him bleed out. I was like, all right, because he wasn't at, you know, uh, after the whole April situation. Uh, so I was like, right, 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 right. So you kind of look back on that differently. So it's like, what, you want me to perform an AI autopsy? And it's kind of like, yeah, kind of cut them apart, see how it all works. So there's all that. Abby's just kind of like, all right, fine, let's do it. Because I think there's probably also that side of things. It's like, well, you're helping out your friend because this is also helping find Piper. I think there's also probably the part of your brain that's like, this is kind of intriguing to kind of find out, you know, what this whole thing is. Um, we also, it was, it was actually another element to this episode that, you know, I haven't really touched on too, was like um, Helen ends up, uh, meeting up with another, you know, AI, and it seems like he's had a normal life. The thing is, he's with someone who has kids. I'm assuming those aren't his kids. I guess those are like his stepkids, but he's kind of been living a normal life. They are kind of, you know, uh, sleeper agents, essentially, you know? Uh, so, but it's kind of like, oh, you ready to fulfill your purpose? It's like, if the time came, are you really willing to leave all this behind? You know, his wife and kids, but it's like, it doesn't matter if I'm really ready or not. My purpose kind of outshines all of that. But then the thing is, Helen was kind of like, okay. Um, she's like, I'm thankful for your sacrifice or whatever. And kills him and rips out the chip. Because that's the thing. Like, I guess, like, that holds all the information you have. Like like I said, maybe they're kind of like secret agents, like all the information they gathered like over those years or whatever is all in that chip or whatever. Like, I don't know. Because it's not like that's all that they are because remember, Piper cut her out years, no, that's about to say years, geez. Uh, it's just like she cut hers out like the first episode of the season. So it's like, what, besides being like a tracker, like what are those things exactly? What kind of effect do they have? It kind of gets you wondering about that. And like, why is Helen going out of her way to collect that? Because I guess it's like, they're necessary. Like, it's like, well, the people, the, the, the bodies aren't necessary. These are, cause I guess it's like you served your purpose, but like, what that is exactly, we don't know. There's like a lot of blanks that needs to be, uh, filled in in that regard. But obviously, you know, Joe, like I said, goes back home, breaks it down to everyone like, yeah, Piper, she's okay, but, you know, wasn't able to bring her back. Because she, because Alex later on is like, tell me what you weren't able to tell them. And it's like that Piper chose to stay behind. And it's like, because she didn't want to dash their hopes, you know. And I, I think that shows you how much she is willing to kind of trust Alex. Obviously, there was that issue about like, well, not letting everyone know the truth about, you know, Piper's situation before. And that was, you know, to protect Piper from, you know, basically dying. But like now that she also shows you that she's willing to confide in Alex. That like, yeah, kind of carry this burden of like knowing something that, you know, it's like 
But, you know, Alex is kind of like, then we'll just still, you know, find her and figure it out. Because now there's thinking, like, maybe uh, Benny and the others got inside of uh, Piper's head, much like um, Emily did. They're kind of thinking, like, maybe it had to be something like that. Because it does beg the question, like, she sent these messages. At the very least, she sent two. So if she did one, that's so why did she change her mind at the last second? If she sent these two messages to us, then why is she now working with Benny? I, I'm curious. Um, we'll, we'll get to, well, we'll, we'll get to it soon enough. But uh, they have to bring in Emily because Emily's going to be the one that ends up deciphering that binary code. And that's interesting. And I love that they were able to pull in Emily in by being like, oh, yeah, like it turns out that AI you built, Piper, she's not the first. There's actually one that's been around for like 15 years. So don't you want to find out who's been meddling in your work? And once again, this goes back to stuff I brought up last episode. Like, is there like a master person? Because they were saying like, this is what we were made for. So it is, it does seem like, because I was, because last episode I was like, oh, so we're going alien. Uh, we're going just pure AI. Are we going aliens? Are we going alien AI? It seems like we are just straight up AI that someone built them 15 years ago. But what was this purpose? I think, cause once again, I think it's just interesting because like what Splinter kind of represents and the fact is that they were taking down um, Kindred's business and stuff like that. They were destroying his buildings and stuff like that. Uh, maybe it's just because that was stuff that was based off a of technology that came from them. But maybe they're kind of, like I said, maybe it's more so like a sort of uh, betterment of humanity by wipe, by maybe like the AI are trying to take over. Their purpose to kind of make the world a better place and they're trying to unify like machines and stuff like that. Like that's what I'm, I'm curious about because I think it's interesting. Well, because I was wondering because I was thinking like, is this interesting him being an AI that Benny would be friends of a hacker? Maybe there, there's reasoning behind that, but also just, you know, a byproduct of like hit the life he became, becoming a, um, you know, reporter and everything, which is interesting when the grand scheme of things, someone who has such a big secret, uh, which I'm sure we'll dive into soon enough, being a reporter who exposes people's secrets. I mean, maybe that's supposed to be the irony behind it. But he's someone that's all about the truth and stuff like that. So for him to have been lying to Joe and everyone, you know, and their family that have got that he got close to, including Viper, uh, it's like I said, it's just the, the irony behind it's interesting. So I'm curious is he going to comment on the irony behind it? But once again, uh, Emily. Uh, it's it's really interesting too because like obviously you know Abby does the autopsy and it's like from top to bottom everything reads for him to be like a human even though there are these AI things they still have organs like a human all their organs are in the right places that they're supposed to be so it's like but Emily was like you're using human conventions you're using devices that are meant to detect human stuff so obviously it's going to detect this stuff because they're meant to be very convincing humans they're supposed to blend in like that so that is interesting. There was kind of another like X, like there was a certain X-ray or something that uh, Abby did that reveals the device that they have. It seems like it's not just one. It seems at the very least there's two, maybe. Well, because remember every time like, because uh, it wasn't just the neck she would go for. Every time Helen would kill someone, she stab it from like the bottom because like there's one like at the front of their heads. So that's the one she would get, the one that's kind of like in the brain area, like in, your, in the front lobe or whatever. So maybe that's the one that holds everything that you are, maybe. Because it's like she's not, or, well, because like Charlie had two, so you'd assume everyone has two, including Piper. So maybe that's the main one. Maybe the, the one in your neck is like a backup, but like everything that you are is in that one. So maybe that's kind of essentially their soul. And the other one is just, like I said, a backup. Maybe it serves some other purpose. I don't know. They just didn't, they made note of the second one, but they did but like now, now I'm sitting here thinking about it in retrospect, it's like that makes sense why she would uh, kill them the way she did. Because she would never cut out their, cut out, because um, it also makes sense why Charlie wouldn't cut that out. Because for whatever reason, he was trying to cut out the one in his, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a thing of like, maybe those actually act as like self-destruct mechanisms. So I, I don't know what to make of that, you know, so like I said. Uh, we'll kind of have to see, but Emily's setting up this whole thing of like, okay, like the code is kind of like a back door, which obviously like Emily would know all about that considering she put the, uh, back door into, um, 
Piper said, well, it was more so Alan, because I remember his name now, because I can't be like, I can't remember home dude's name, but I remember it now. Uh, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of her go-to way of killing people. It's not even just uh, the AI, because that's, okay, that's literally how she killed Alan, was stabbing him through the neck. So that's kind of her go-to way to kill people. I mean, you actually got to think of it, you know? Uh, from, you could be like, well, from a villain, at least she's consistent. Um, it also was interesting, too, finding out, oh, Helen's the one that's in charge. Because I thought, like, oh, maybe her and Benny were kind of equal park nursing. It's like, oh, no, straight up, Helen's the one in charge, and Benny's kind of the one following orders. It seems like this is kind of her operation. Like I said, what that entails, we'll see. But um, I thought it was really um, interesting when Emily, like I said, was suggesting, like, oh, like, drilling into... Um, Joe's had to kind of like connect some stuff like directly into her brain and Joe's like wait what like no 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 I'm not really the biggest fan of this idea but luckily uh Brooks shows up with a headset and everything and it's like uh I still think an electro to her head would be better and it's like Joe's like don't worry that wasn't gonna happen that probably wasn't probably gonna happen it's like uh, even Joe was kind of getting nervous about that situation but um Emily has suggested finding a gold book and that gold book inside of um Piper's subconscious would be like everything that's happened this past month this way you can get her back yada yada, yada. it's it's actually because even Joe kind of was like isn't that kind of wrong because it's basically just showing a part of her, her memories and stuff like that um it because it, it's like you're kind of it's almost like you're trying to dictate, rather than letting Piper 100% just kind of figure out who she wants to be, it's almost like you're taking away that choice from her. Because, because what because, and the reason why Joe probably kind of felt a little scummy about it, because it's literally the same thing Emily did. She went in there and kind of, but it, like, you know, she's trying to spruce it up by being like, well, this is just because, you know, it's this one particular thing. You're not changing everything else about her. You're just putting her back the way she was. You know, she chose you and everything. And I even love Emily, I made mistakes, and Joe's like, you tried to kill Piper, but because she didn't choose you, but it didn't work, you know, but it's like, oh yeah, she chose you and you're the better, I'm like, yeah it almost did seem like Emily was trying to find and get something out of this, what necessarily we don't know, but um, still, it was it was fascinating, um, her getting inside of um, Piper's head and Piper being like, oh you see what I made, I made this place, because she modeled it after, you know, the inside of the house and everything and it's like, you know, but Piper reveals, like, oh, the reason behind all this, because she wants to help out Benny. And because I, I like that, because she had that conversation with Benny, because it seemed like you can definitely tell Ben, because so far Benny hasn't done any of the killing. That's all been Helen. Whatever this plan is, because even she had brought it up, like, you don't like the fact is that you have to lie to Joe. I can tell you're hurting because you hurt Joe because she was your friend, and because you hurt her, that hurt too. So he is kind of, because... Helen is the most detached. It's like she looks at this human nature stuff of like, oh, we've got to pretend to be humans and stuff like that to fit in. It's We're meant to feel so it could be easier to kind of slip amongst humans, but it's meant to be a disguise. Yet, as we can see, the guy that she had killed earlier in the episode, Benny, as well as Piper, you know, it's kind of that thing of like, fake it till you make it. But it's like, you know, when these things that you're trying to pretend to be, you know human for so long but you go pretending for so long eventually is there a possibility that those feelings become real helen is saying no but piper kind of believes that and you can tell the hesitation that is you know um benny with the whole situation so but uh she doesn't plan she wants to save all of them she wants to change you know benny's mind everyone's mind to stop what she doesn't know what they're doing but kind of feels like no i can change your mind i can make them like me but joe was like no 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 who cares about benny it's like because you know because benny was a friend and he betrayed her but more so than anything it's like oh you know and it's sad because she's so desperate to get piper back that she was going to like she literally picked up the book and you know piper's like i gotta do this and then Joe, I was like, are you going to do it? I was like, please tell me you're not going to. Joe, within seconds, throws a book in the fire, but the fire goes out. And Piper's like, wait, were you really going to do that? And it's like so heartbreaking because Joe felt bad about it. But it's just because, you know, you're her daughter. You know, she she wanted you back so badly that she was willing to do whatever it takes. But that was a very Emily move. And she's like, no, that was the wrong move to make. 
I'm curious because Piper doesn't bring it up later on, but I think that's definitely going to be an issue going forward. I don't know. It, it might they might make a plot point over. They might not. They might, I, I feel like it'd be an interesting plot point to kind of bring up. Like you know, it's like oh, you're back home and everything, but now you know Joe was willing to do that. You might look at Joe a little bit differently. That could be an angle they go down. I'm not sure. At the same time, you know, Alex is supposed to not get involved in all of this. And even Chris being like, you know, no, uh, Joe specifically said you're not supposed to be here. And he's like, well, she's not my balls. And then I love Chris being like, yeah, but it feels like she is. Um, so, but um, he brings in his friend Francis. And it turns out that the device that um, that him and Cr that um, Alex and Chris had found it turns out like it's it's a device specifically that they, uh, the company Francis works for was meant to um, working with the DoD. It was a project to basically make something that's super magnetic yet could stay um, in a liquid form under hotter t or under hot temperatures or something like that. For what purpose, I don't know. Because even they were like, "Yeah, we don't know why we built this thing," but uh, that was kind of you know interesting in the long run but the fact is like a lot of the stuff behind it he was like it, it isn't feasible because the amount of energy needed for the thing is crazy plus like some of the, like the chemical reactions from the stuff could be you know explosive and deadly in itself so that was really uh interesting but it was also an interesting byproduct of this new friend this old friend of uh alex's popping up is he's like oh like yeah the fact is that you are uh you apparently you and your ex uh, ended up uh, adopting a kid together, which is like, well, the Piper situation is a lot more complicated than that. But it's also like, also you're helping, you know, uh, consult at the police station where she's chief. So it's a thing of like, you are divorced from your ex-wife, yet it seems like you and your ex-wife are still kind of in the same circles. It's like, rather than kind of leaving your own lives, it's almost like you're still so heavily connected. And that was a conversation like uh, Joe and Brooks had last episode. So it seems like, but and now it's like, Francis is offering her a job, offering him, a, uh, Alex, a job because it's like, you know, the fact is everyone's moving on except for you. And that's something that Alex does have to think about because it's interesting because him and Joe are in a spot where it's like both of them, you know, there's something there. Uh, but I think neither one of them is kind of like if we're not going to take that steps to kind of potentially figure that out, then it's like it's best we do both move on. It's like, hey, you got your hands full, you know, you got Piper and everything. But for Alex, he kind of feels like ah, I kind of need to kind of be living my own life. I'm still kind of like treating this situation like we're still together because the whole conversation you know and it's, it's a conversation like obviously she's avoided having even with uh benny a couple episodes back was why her and alex split in the first place that's still something we don't know i'm assuming it has something to do maybe it's just kind of like joe's personality of kind of being a bit of a control freak but also kind of like just her job in general i, I feel like it was more so the job thing i might be inferring a little way too much by kind of labeling her con a control freak, but it seems like, eh, Joe seems like she's definitely the one who kind of feels like she needs to kind of be in charge and everything, so. But, uh, regardless, I I'm curious to kind of see what that means going forward, because, like, obviously the job would mean that Alex would be moving on. Obviously, he could come back home on the weekends and spend time with Mia, but it'd be an adjustment that neither him nor uh, because for him, he's like, I need to kind of live my own life. I kind of can't kind of get caught up in the cycle of all this. I enjoy all of this. But I think at the same time, it's like maybe being around, maybe Piper will convince him not to do it. Because it's like, no, Alex, like, you're part of this family. You're part of my family. Like, uh, you, you're a part of this family that I was brought into is kind of what I'm trying to say. So she wouldn't want him to move away. Um, and even though she probably doesn't really know how to quite say it because it's probably weird and awkward because even the whole like, oh, we shouldn't have slept in the same bed because that was weird. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's your bed, you know, and everything. So Joe probably can't really bring herself to admit she kind of wants Alex to stay because even though it's kind of there, it's that, like I said, the thing of like, it's still that fresh enough divorce thing where it's like you're still moving in those motions of like, oh yeah, that person that was kind of a big part of your life is still a big part of your life. You're still in that process, in that phase where it's like, they're still there and everything. So we'll see, like I said, in the long run, um, what that ends up uh, turning into. But uh, then we had the whole situation of Helen and Benny breaking into like a research facility for something 
uh, which I'm assuming maybe is that same. I assume it is that same device and everything because I don't think we actually saw what was. Did we see what was in the box? I don't actually don't remember now. I think it was the same device, wasn't it? Maybe maybe not. Regardless, the guy that was helping out, and that's also another thing I think is kind of interesting is why is it that Piper is as special as she is? Because apparently, like the abilities, that she, the things she can do, literally none of the others can do that. So that's why they kind of look at her as very special, and so. When it was all said and done, um, Piper helped them get what they needed, uh, but then uh, Helen ended up killing the guy that was helping him, and she was like, you killed him, and it's like, I didn't kill him, you did. I'm like, that's a very back ass uh logic you got there, because for her, she's like, you were trying to, I get, like, Helen figured it out, she's like, oh, I know what you're trying to do. You think you can change me, Benny, all of us? I guess because it's like, oh, he was kind of getting swayed by, like, oh, look how specially she is, maybe she is kind of like... Maybe, I think maybe it kind of might be a power tripping thing where Helen doesn't want anyone to look at uh, Piper as like, oh, she's some great savior or she'll be the one that's the most powerful us. We should follow her. It's like, Helen probably doesn't want that. It's like, no, follow me because I'm the one, that, I'm the only one that's operating towards heading down our true purpose, our true path. Because uh, I think more so than anything, she wants Piper to be kind of a weapon for her. Because what was interesting, though, is when she was, like, talking to Piper and stuff like that of, like, you know, like, you'll be ready soon enough, she checked Piper's neck. So it's like, whatever that device is, I think it keeps them in line in certain regards. So, but Piper doesn't have hers, you know, so I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm curious to find out. But uh, I like Piper basically kind of going all Magneto and kind of crump, like, trapping her in all that metal and obviously she escapes with Benny but then like Piper's trying to talk Benny out of all of this because it's like hey the fact of the matter is I know you don't want to do this all you have to do look deep inside and find out the real you what the real you wants you could be like me kind of free like you know be this AI but also have that human element to it it's like all that all that that was Benny isn't a lie there's truth to that and even he's like I want it but the fact is his mission comes first, so. Then Joe shows up and Benny has a gun to her head. Um, but when the time came, he couldn't pull the trigger. Uh, Joe still whacked him in the jaw with a, a tire iron. Because it's still kind of like, despite everything, you still kidnap Piper, you asshole type of situation. So, And he is apologetic about it. But obviously, like I said, Joe's probably, well, not probably. She's definitely not in the mood to really even listen to him on that in that regard. Because it's not only did you take Piper, you broke her trust. Especially after the trust that they built up. Like like I said, that's what made that twist, like, reveal even, hit even harder was that whole situation and you know now knowing like oh he's just like piper and everything too so even more lies you know so but uh i mean in the end though like piper is back home everyone's kind of reunited and happy you know so you know and you see joe kind of smiling looking like you know her household like her you know her family is fully reunited and everything you know it's it's whole again you know but obviously like i said that gets complicated because of the whole alex thing that's also interesting too with the whole brooks thing because it definitely feels like obviously there's some flirtation there but then like you see alex literally enter the scene and it's like all oh, this awkward kind of like there's a kind of almost a love triangle situation almost but like i said you get the feeling like there's something between brooks and uh, Joe, but also Alex kind of adds that angle to make it seem like, you know, like I said, there's still something there between him and Joe that they're not really quite tackling, so like I said, we'll see, but, um, what also surprised me was, uh, the end of the episode, because part of me was wondering, like, the moment, like, because she's bringing, because Emily's threatening Brooks by being like, oh man, like, your superior officers are going to be asking a whole bunch of questions like why you're spending so much time with this particular uh, sheriff, why uh, looking into those big blue eyes of hers and stuff like that. So it's like Emily's kind of playing her own game because you know she's trying to manipulate Brooks, but then the car shuts down. My mind, my mind immediately was like, oh, she set this up. Like you're being a sucker. Like the moment you give her the opportunity to boot everything back up, it's boom, she's going to get out of there. I was so certain of it, but then like later on, people do show up. But then my mind is like, did Emily, given the opportunity on the computers and stuff like that, did she secretly send a message to Helen and them to being like, you don't need Piper. I can be the one to help you. I, it's like, well, because the thing, because well, that could also be the thing too. That might not be the case. Like maybe uh, uh, 
Emily had nothing to do with it. It's just because I just, you know, she's always up to something and she's always taking advantage of a situation. So I'm kind of wondering, like, maybe she did. But then the other side of my brain is because obviously Helen's there. Helen is probably taking Emily because Emily can probably replicate what she did to Piper because Piper is the only one that was made by Emily and yet Emily was able to kind of somehow Piper has abilities so she probably wants that replicate so it's like whatever you did to Piper make do it to us too so we can all have powers more so than anything it's most likely like make sure I get powers above anyone else type of situation because we don't need Piper she's a hindrance to our plan she actually wants to go against our plan once again Whatever that may be, like I said, I'm looking at some like AI revolution. Like I said, in their own way, they're trying to make the world a better place. I think that's what their main purpose is. Like I said, we'll have to wait to kind of dive into that. I hope um, that uh, Brooks is okay because that would suck if that's how this whole story ends for him, especially because what they were setting up between him and Joe. I'm like, oh, I thought we'd be definitely seeing a lot more of it. Especially because they had that cold conversation of like, oh, she didn't want him to kind of get dragged in all of this. She didn't want Alice to get dragged in all this because of how dangerous everything is. But he was wearing a bulletproof vest. I about to say like, well, would they kill him? I mean, they shot him a lot, but it could just all hit or at least most of it could have hit the bulletproof vest. Because the thing is like, I about to say, will they kill him? Like, I mean, well, we know Helen has killed humans. Uh, so the rest might not be too shy from that situation either. I mean, Helen's just kind of racking up bodies on both sides of this whole thing. It's like, that's why I'm like, how are people going to work with her? I mean, I guess maybe most people don't know what she's doing except for Piper. So, um, there's that old situation. So, either way, I'm very, very curious to see ultimately where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode about, you know, um, like I said, all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love, light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.